forensic experts are at work in the Pulse nightclub trying to piece together exactly what happened Sunday morning, putting together the sequence of shots fired, more than 200 rounds fired overall from the terrorist himself and from the police and SWAT teams who were inside there. So they're really trying to reconstruct the exact order of events there. And law enforcement officials said early this morning that their main goal, their priority for today, is to try and end the uncertainty for families, to let them know whether their loved ones are dead or alive. Based on statements made by the, by the suspect, based on information we received uh, from the suspect and from uh, the hostages and people inside, we believed further loss of life was imminent. Police chief there saying why they decided to breach at 5 o'clock in the morning. All the bodies have now been removed from inside the Pulse nightclub. They were taken out overnight, four at a time in vans, taken to the county medical examiner's office. All 49 victims have been identified. The next of kin of 48 of those 49 have been notified. So almost completing the process here. Many of the victims uh, in their 20s and early 30s. So when it comes to notifying next of kin, a lot of those people notified over the past two days have been mothers. So in the past day alone, more than 25 Orlando mothers receiving final notification that their son or, or daughter was killed on Sunday morning. Charles, back to you. Thank you very much, Steve Harrigan. The investigation is underway now into how and why Omar Mateen entered the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, murdering 49 people. Uh, okay, here's what we know right now. The FBI had previously investigated uh, Mateen. Mateen declared his allegiance to ISIS during a 911 call from the nightclub. Uh, we know he also made two trips to Saudi Arabia in 2011 and 2012. FBI Director James Comey says Mateen was radicalized on the Internet and had made previous claims about ties to various terrorist groups. He claimed family connections to Al-Qaeda. He also said that he was a member of Hezbollah, which is a Shia terrorist organization that is a bitter enemy of the so-called Islamic State, ISIL. He said he hoped that law enforcement would raid his apartment and assault his wife and child so that he could martyr himself. Joining me now, Steve Rogers, Mike Baker, Sheriff Paul Babieu, and Sheriff David Clark. Sheriff Clark, let me start with you. Uh, you expressed a, a tremendous amount of outrage uh, over on Twitter. Uh, and, and it feels, again, that perhaps something is going on with the national uh, FBI uh, and, and the lack of uh, sort of support for local law enforcement efforts. The notion that this person was interviewed on two successive, in two successive years uh, and deemed uh, or given sort of a pass bothers a lot of people, particularly after James Comey's statements today. Epic intelligence failure. Those are all red flags. And I think after 49 Americans are slaughtered in a terrorist incident, I don't think it's unfair to be uh, hypercritical of our um, uh, intelligence agency, a domestic intelligence agency here in the United States, the FBI. Look, in fairness to the FBI, they're miscast. They are not an intelligence agency. They are an investigative agency. They went into this thing with a mindset of looking for evidence to establish probable cause to make an arrest and to prosecute. That's not what intelligence work is. Intelligence works on these three things. You want to identify threats, you want to know if they have the capabilities, and then you want to know if they're planning an attack, and then you want to notify somebody well in advance. You want to predict, preempt, and you want to uh, prevent terror attacks. That's not what the FBI is doing through no fault of theirs. And you also cannot tie their hands. They have to be able to do some things that people are not comfortable with. Things like surveilling mosques. Things like informants inside of, of these organizations. And that's not to indict all Muslims. But you can't stick your head in the sand out of political correctness uh, because these things are going to happen. So I think until we get, and I've said this before, Charles, I probably said it on your program, until we get a true intelligence structure, domestic intelligence structure in the United States, and we start prosecuting these things as acts of war and not criminal acts, we're going to continue to see this stuff. I know you can't predict every incident, and James Comey, in, in, in uh, fairness to him, and I admire that guy. But we're not asking him to find a needle in a haystack. We're just asking him to find the haystack. And once they identify the haystack, which is what Omar Mateen was, with that plethora of evidence, then we'll look for the needle. Steve Rogers, you were uh, the military intel officer of the FBI National Joint Force. Uh, when, when, when James Comey says yes, um, uh, it, it suggested to me that he said that in the uh, May 2013 interview 
that because Mateen had made contradictory uh, uh, statements, despite the fact that he admitted to the threats that he made, he admitted that he expressed a desire to be a martyr, but they felt that he wasn't serious in part because he wasn't getting his terror organizations right. And then again in July of 2014, uh, the, even though he had some sort of association with the suicide bomber from El Nusra, still, and they went to the same mosque, still not enough evidence. What does it take for the FBI to, to really let red flag someone and follow this all the way through? Charles, this is the result of politically correct law enforcement policies that are being handed down to the federal agencies like the FBI and local law enforcement. Every officer you have on the air tonight on this uh, uh, group right now, they could tell you that one of the greatest assets a cop has is his instinct. Before Ferguson, before these policies came down, police officers on the street, FBI agents, any law enforcement officer, his instinct kicks in and that causes him to go the extra mile. But today, if you go the extra mile, you're going to be called a, a profiler. You're going to be taken to task by the government. You, as a police officer, run into many problems. They have hindered the ability for police officers to do the job. And yet, Mike Baker, we do have watch lists and we do monitor when people go abroad, particularly when we think they've gone abroad for training uh, amongst one of these various terrorist groups. And so you had a series of yellow if not red flags and still this guy slipped through the cracks yeah oh look I, I understand the desire for people to uh to to blame somebody right that makes the 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 the, the, the horrible nature of this attack easier to process in a sense it's got to be somebody's fault well you know what if we want to have that discussion steve's right let's talk about uh the playing field that law enforcement's allowed to operate in and that's and, and, and again, we have to understand if if you want the bureau to get on this individual, do their interviews, not have within those rules probable cause to continue and, and, and go into a, from a preliminary into an active investigation, then what are you saying? Well, we got to give them more leeway. Well, what happens when you do that? Well, you lose something on the privacy and civil liberties side. So there's a trade-off, and this is a very good conversation to be having. It's a much more efficient conversation than the knee-jerk go-to gun control conversation that always happens. But yeah, I'm, I'm tired of people kicking the bureau in the backside every time something like this happens because they're operating within the the, the parameters that are set by Congress, supposedly at the will of the people. Uh, to protect privacy and civil liberties. Mike, before I go to, to share about you, though, when James Comey said at the end of his press conference, we, we're going to take a hard, long look at our own work, and we haven't to think what we would do differently. And so far, he's, when he said they don't think they would do anything differently, that does bother the American public. I know, I know our law enforcement does everything for us, and they go beyond the call of duty, but it, it's really, I mean, maybe we watch too much TV, but it feels like this was someone who fell in their lap. And by the way, so did the last three or four of these terrorists terrorist monsters, they were on various watch lists. What are these watch lists and why aren't they followed up? Mike, well, Sheriff Bab, you, can you, let me, let me just, Sheriff Bab, you, I know that you're not on the FBI side yes. or the federal side, but uh, you can weigh in on that as well. Well, I can tell you this, that uh, we are at war and we're not acting like this. When the commander in chief himself, President Obama has said, no less than 22 times that a graver national security threat than terrorism is in fact global warming. And so when that, when that threat posture we take as a nation in looking at ISIS and other terrorist organizations and we have incidents like this, local law enforcement, guys that, that look like me and Sheriff Clark and, and women will be fighting terrorism here throughout our country. That's not the preferred path that we should be taking. We should have a robust effort, not just intelligence gathering, but through our military to destroy ISIS, to destroy cells that we know offer great threat and harm to the United States, not send 50 soldiers to Syria, then uh, we really, really want to defeat them, as Obama said, and sends 250 more. Let's act like these are serious threats, grave threats to our international security right. and destroy them. Uh, Charles, the sheriff just used the key word that the president will not use. We are at war. This is not a criminal problem anymore. It's a national security problem. And when you're at war, you use every tool available to you, including, and I know a lot of people get upset over this, including the NSA surveillance and data mining. These are the things that will protect this nation. And then, as Sheriff Clark said, intelligence sharing from top to bottom is very important, right down to the street cop. Sheriff Clark, uh, the mantra since 1980, from 
since 9-11, rather, has been see something, say something. You know, we already know many neighborhoods, people are intimidated to saying something because often the criminal doesn't get arrested and, and they become the target of uh, whatever retribution there might be. In addition to the politically correct aspect of this, how can we be encouraged as citizens to see something and say something if they're going to fumble the ball? Well, you can, and that's why the citizens are afraid to come forward. Look, this doesn't always have to end in an arrest, and that's why, you know, I'm being critical of the FBI, but I think they're miscast in fairness to them that they're not an intelligence agency. It, it, goal one is to preempt an attack, to be able to reasonably predict and, and let a policymaker know, here's the threat, he is capable, or she is, or this organization is capable, and they are planning an attack. Once this guy was doing what he did, traveling to Saudi Arabia, you know, the totality of the things that he was involved with, he owned firearms. It's time to move in and just take the firearms. You don't have to arrest him, but you put all that together, and then you let this individual know. You're on the radar screen, and Charles, once they are on the radar screen, they can never come off. How anybody can say what he was doing was inconclusive just blows me right. away. I go to an airport, and they sit at the airport at the checkpoint. They're feeling me up from head to foot toe. They're searching through all my belongings just to get on an airplane, and I'm not suspected of being a terrorist. This guy comes along. He's visiting these sites. He pledges allegiance to ISIS. Uh, he's spewing jihadist rhetoric, jihadist rhetoric, and that's inconclusive, but at an airport, I'm suspect from the moment I hit that TSA checkpoint. This is ass backwards, Charles. All right, guys, listen, I could not have asked for a better, smarter, more passionate law enforcement panel. Gentlemen, thank you all really very much. Appreciate it.